Hi, this is Data Driven Q and A, and today we are going to talk about uh, major mistakes that people make when they write uh, master's dissertations. Um, and I have um, Alex Karlamov with me today, as always, when we talk about <laughs> dissertations. So Alex is a very experienced um, supervisor, and uh, he reads a lot of um, master's dissertations. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, the major mistakes that people are making. So I guess uh, we are now, uh, when we're filming this, this is uh, August. Uh, so the majority of people are kind of nearing the completion mm -hmm. of the dissertation. They're about to submit within weeks. Yeah, yeah so the, the, normally they would submit in September or something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so... Um, in terms of uh, like when you start reading dissertations, uh, what are the main mistakes that you usually see? So generally, um, it's quite logical. So people start from the beginning, but there is a part that they neglect in the beginning that uh, I often uh, notice. And um, I think everyone reads it. So it doesn't matter who who, who reads it, whether it's the first or second assessor or the third in some cases. So that's the um, title, the abstract on all the first pages. Mm -hmm. So um, the dissertation needs to have uh, like um, error free uh, title. So you really need to make sure that you don't make a mistake in the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the usual. I think uh, a lot of people make um, uh, spelling mistakes oh, yes, or yeah. grammar mistakes even in the title, which is uh, yeah. important. So yeah, so you, first thing yes. to make sure is double check. Double check the title for spelling mistakes because um, you focus so much on the on the main body of work and then you forget the first page. So that's, that's very common. And then the second thing that is often um, less than perfect is the abstract because that has been left for the last minute and it was rushed. Many, many people write it like in the, in the last, uh, the very last minute before submitting or before printing out the dissertation or before sending it to the system. And um, the abstract often, like the abstract is read nearly all the time. So that's the first thing after the title that uh, anyone will read from your work. So if it's good, people will assume that the rest of the work is also up to the high standard. But if the abstract is bad, clumsy, it, they will start their, um, their reading with the idea that maybe this dissertation is not as good as they thought. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the, the two things, uh, the spelling mistakes and the title, the abstract. Yeah. To me, uh, another thing that uh, I would mention is uh, coherence. A lot of times people do not write a story, they just write kind of bits and pieces of argument mm -hmm. in different places and then it doesn't actually add up together mm -hmm. so when you read it it's like you are reading i don't know like 10 different short stories oh yeah <laughs> that are not connected but that's that's the like the main body of the dissertation that's mm -hmm. like a completely different set of problems because by the time that you are about to submit um rewriting that story or writing the story from scratch from different bits can be really challenging especially mm -hmm. if you have like two or three weeks left so uh, considering that, imagine that you have a story and your dissertation is, uh, is, um, is written well. So there are certain formalities that really give away people who rushed it or didn't. So um, make sure that your formatting is correct. Make sure that it's consistent. Make sure that you don't use different styles in different chapters. Make sure that your font is the same type. Make sure it's the same size and those things. So you will be amazed how many times I receive dissertations with different fonts in it or different font sizes or different styles. And um, very often um, people, when they, when they assemble the um, final PDF, they forget to refresh, for example, the table of contents or the table of figures or the table of tables. So there is a mismatch between the number of um, the pages or even the headings of the sections. So make sure that when you, when you print it, 
you double check each single page against the tab table of contents, against the table of figures, table of tables, table of equations, because those things um, often um, are just all messed up and people don't double check before they submit. It happens very often. So they spend months working on that dissertation and then submit something that has obvious problems. Mm. Okay, so just double check it. Yeah, another, my favorite mistake, uh, I think, f is um, different formatting of the references. Oh, because yeah. sometimes uh, people start with Harvard style mm -hmm. and then they go to APA style. Uh, and then there's something else and, and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes not even citing stuff, yeah. which is uh, also important and uh, or not citing things properly, like they would have a direct quote without having a page there. But yeah, I mean, uh, can, and kind of switching back and forth uh, mm -hmm. between the... You know, the, the style, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reference style. But generally, if people use a software like Mendeley for their references, they don't need to worry about it. So the software will ensure that your formatting is close to correct. Okay, You still need to have a properly assembled database in the in Mendeley for it to assemble it properly. But it will prevent things like mixing up reference styles because mm -hmm. it will be consistent to what is set up in the software least so uh, that that's good and again uh, going back to the content of the dissertation i think there is um there is a big uh, problem as well generally in the conclusion because the conclusions are often rushed so they're they're finished in the end and uh, people often forget parts of the conclusion so they can have the perfect introduction the perfect literature review perfect methodology perfect results and analysis but then conclusion or well, discussion discussion and conclusion it's um, suboptimal so there are several things that they need to do in the conclusion so if the conclusion doesn't include discussion they can go without uh, reviewing their like uh, finding against the different different literature but what they need to do is to review their objectives and the their aims what they basically set up to do in the beginning so they need to align their conclusion with their introduction so they can even put them side by side and make sure that for example my aim is there my objectives are there and you mm -hmm. do it in a different order so basically first you look at your objectives and you discuss who you, how what you did achieved each one of those objectives and then you discuss how achieving those objectives moved you towards your aim Okay. In case you have a research question, then you need to answer your research question to a certain level. If you forget to answer your research question, then you didn't finish. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing, I guess. Uh, so that's kind of to to finish off the style bit. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, well, well, quite often, you have uh, either. The, the terminology is not consistent, so people start with one term and then they call call it oh, yeah. a different mm -hmm. name uh, in between, uh, simply because first they mm -hmm. read a paper that called yeah. it this, and then they read another paper that called it something else. And another thing is uh, kind of talking about spelling uh, British versus American <laughs> style very often. Um, again, it mm -hmm. depends on the journal that they are reading. So most journals use American spelling. Um, and, you know, sometimes people start writing in British English and they switch to American English or vice versa. If they mm -hmm. started writing in American English and then they read uh, like a British journal and, mm -hmm. you know, cited uh, someone from the, the British journal. So, yeah, you need to make sure that all these things are working together. Yeah, they, and that happens very often with non-native speakers. Mm -hmm. That generally doesn't happen if you have a British uh, or an American writing. That's that's okay, but yeah, non non native probably is the major bulk, mm -hmm. and I think that's most of our viewers as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. make sure that you keep the the style of your uh, English uh, consistent. And finally, there are several other things that we need to consider in the conclusion as well that I just remembered. So as soon as you finish reviewing your aims and objectives, uh, actually your objectives and then your aims, uh, you need to talk about what are the limitations of your work. So that's very important. And uh, you talk about things like... Uh, if I, uh, what are the methods that I adopted? How are they limited in terms of um, their reach or 
potential for claims, generaliz generalizability. Then you need to talk about potential problems with external validity, with potential problems with internal validity, depending on your methods. Then you need to talk about, for example, things like in case uh, you have a sample, discussing whether your sample size is good enough. Is it uh, what you wanted? Is it ideal for this study or not? Most often it's not. Mm -hmm. So um, you need to discuss um, the limitations of your study. And also, for example, you can make a perfect study and then discuss what you could do to, for example, improve the improve your ability to make um, claims about its general generalizability. And that would be, for example, to use mixed methods or do you do an, an, another method to see if, um, if you can replicate your study and mm -hmm. so on. So you basically can move uh, into the next subsection, which is the future research. So as soon as you review your limitations, you can also set up what will be the next steps. So you imagine if you had more time or even if you had unlimited time what would you do mm -hmm. so and in that in that section is quite free it needs to be reasonable of course but um, you basically say that i would like to have a bigger sample size i would like to replicate this with a larger sample i would like to replicate it in maybe different contexts i would like to talk to different people i would like to uh, potentially approach it from um, an indirect measurement perspective anything so basically you discuss what would you do if you just had much more time and willingness to finish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the final, the final thing that I would like to, to mention as well is um, appendices. Mm -hmm. So everything that we said in terms of formatting also applies to appendices. And uh, like one trick that I could uh, I, I could tell you, um, if you, if your appendices are not perfect on the day of submission, a website normally helps if you had like a GitHub page. I mean, it has to be an existing page, but if you, you know, if 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 uh, something is not perfect and you need a couple of more hours to make it perfect, then just put your appendices online rather than a supplementary mm -hmm. material online and include mm -hmm. the link saying that, oh, you know, you can find m materials uh, there. So, yeah, but don't... Uh, submit stuff like completely raw tables that you don't know yeah. whether they come from what they refer to uh, and don't assume that the reader knows where they apply because you mm -hmm. know they would uh, very often people for example put things into appendices that are not uh, really uh, nicely uh, aligned or do not use, I don't know, page numbering for the appendices mm -hmm. and then they have references to these things in the text. So mm -hmm. that's, that makes it all very, very complicated. Now also, um, another thing that you need to remember about appendix is it needs to be mentioned in your work. If mm -hmm. it's not mentioned in your work, yeah. it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you shouldn't dump there everything you did, all your tables, all, all your raw analysis. You sh that's not what the appendix is, is for. So you need to make sure that it's relevant. Also, a good rule of thumb about what to include in the appendix is things that don't fit in one single page. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it doesn't fit in an A4 page as a table or a figure, probably you should uh, put it in the appendix and make a smaller summary of that table to put in the, inside the body, the main body of your work. Uh, so that kind of things. Also, tables, uh, make sure that they're readable because if your tables in the appendix are not readable and uh, formatted incorrectly, that's, that's just bad because you should assume that it will be looked at. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, it's like, don't put your raw data into the appendix. First of all, if you did something like interviews, don't put the transcripts into your appendix, because first, that will be the breach of confidentiality. Second, even if you anonymize, that's raw data, no one wants to look at it. And second, you should really put something like, for example, your coding structure into the appendix. In case mm -hmm. of um, quantitative dissertations, you should probably put uh, significant 
significance tests, um, uh, normality tests, uh, you should put um, the distributions, all the descriptive statistics like histograms and tables uh, that uh, characterize your variables. If it's not central for your work, if it's just um, good to know or potentially interesting, put it into the appendix. So don't um, make your results and analysis section full of histograms describing each single variable you use because that's not interesting, okay? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you keep it clean and straight to the point and um, just put everything else into the appendix. Yeah, and uh, for experimental um, for experimental dissertations, uh, do include uh, uh, an, an, uh, an example of ex experimental instructions because what happens very often, you try <laughs> to figure out, uh, even in, you know, when we review papers, so uh, uh, I'm sure Alex, you do that as well, and even when, when we review mm -hmm. papers for the journals that happens when, you know, there is a lot of ambiguity about what people that have happened. done. Yeah, what <laughs> happened in the lab. Of course, you don't want to put mm -hmm. it in the paper. And then people forget to mm -hmm. put any information in the appendix mm -hmm. uh, so that at least, you know, you could you could find out, uh, you know, what, what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember a recent case when... Um, uh, as an associate editor, I handled a paper for review and reviewers completely disagreed about... Uh, you know what what a person has done in terms of uh, you know in terms of experimental design. So what exactly happened? So that very often happens at master's level when people run an experiment and then they don't mm -hmm. explain what what was going on. Mm -hmm. And and also it um, the protocol that that um, and even even what you asked people tells a lot about uh, your research. It's often much clear and clearer than looking at your methodology section because the methodology section often doesn't tell what happened exactly. So when you look at, uh, for example, your survey or your experimental uh, procedure um, in the appendix, the one that you show to people, then it becomes much clearer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it might work in your favor. Maybe it won't work in your favor. So, but anyway, it needs to be there anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, don't include like general statements like we incentivize something in the <laughs> usual way. You just like be precise and, you know, make uh, references. So that's pretty much, I think, all, mm -hmm. uh, all of the things that I wanted to mention. I yeah. don't know if you can think of something else. I guess that's that's all pretty much. Well, if you are if you are watching this video, do let us know if we missed anything. But uh, that's uh, our take on this problem, you know, submitting master's dissertation and what mistakes you can possibly make. And yeah, thanks a lot and keep thinking and see you next time.